I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Debbie Levitt, CEO of P-Type. Debbie is a UX strategist, thinker, designer, everything. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, I hope everybody can hear me. I'm from the East Coast of America. I usually don't need a microphone. Um, I'm Debbie Levitt. I'm a UX strategist, designer, speaker, trainer, consultant, uh, all the things. Um, I have an American company. I'm also now based in Italy. So I like to say, come visit Sardinia, come see me, and write it off as a business trip. So please, come see beautiful Sardinia. This is DevOps ICU, as in intensive care unit. We'll be improving DevOps by correctly integrating UX. And uh, clients like to call me Mary Poppins. I fly in, fix everything, sing a few songs, and then fly away to where I'm needed next. Now, this workshop, this is the warning, this 30-minute this session boils down my two-day workshop to about 25-ish minutes, so I like to joke it's the minimum viable presentation. But I'll be around uh, the rest of the day if you have any questions, but I think my whole time is going to be burned with the 421 slides coming down into this version. And of course, you're welcome to tweet. I do uh, welcome people to take pictures of my slides. Um, many of them don't have words, but the ones I think people like to take pictures of will have words. And uh, you're welcome to at me, DevOps I see you, and use some of the hashtags here also, uh, DevOps Days Oslo, I know is one. So I should also mention I'm from the American desert. To you. So at many companies, we know that engineering is fed by other teams. Designs and blueprints, they come from someone who's doing the layouts and flows, the designs, and how the customer is interacting with the system. And these are non-engineering individuals and teams who want to be collaborating throughout the entire process. Engineering doesn't operate in a vacuum. But too many companies are circumventing or excluding the UX uh, workers because they see it excluded from their agile books and training and how-tos. And they also assume that UX are just time and budget wasters. Or they incorrectly assume that UX just draws boxes on a page and anybody can do that, right? Wrong. Um, expert UX architects research, design, test, and iterate on everything between someone saying, I have an idea, and let's get it to developers to be built. DevOps is about so much more than how uh, developers connect with their IT or how infrastructure is managed or how frameworks can be improved. It's really about recognizing how many teams are involved in this process, how intertwined their roles and work really are, and finding ways to make sure everybody is at the table. Developers and engineering arch architects at least always tell me that they want to be involved in our creative and design process, but where's that in the definition of DevOps? And all of us on the creative team and the product managers, we want to stay involved as engineers are building and testing, yet so many methodologies exclude us. So these are old silos that it's time to break down. All your customer sees is your user experience. That's it. They don't see a thousand developers or whether you were agile or lean or waterfall. And you're a user too. And the software and systems that you choose, you probably pick them for specific reasons and they've got competitors. So what made you, made you choose the ones that you've chosen, which may or may not be that one. And when you use a system you don't like, are you thinking, I wonder how many sprints this took. No, when something doesn't work the way you're expecting it to, you're thinking, who built this piece of junk? And you're right. Who designed this system? Who tested it? Did they test on people like you? Did they research with people like you to learn your habits and motivations and real user needs? And of course, was it tested before it was unleashed on the public? UX is driven by some of the same results that DevOps is looking for. We're problem finders, problem solvers, we're customer advocates, and we're driven by product quality. And we're certainly driven by trying to build what customers really need. 
We care about our teams working efficiently, and we care about getting fantastic, easy to learn, easy to use, tell your friends it's great, products to market as fast as possible. Enhancing this relationship saves time, money, and sanity. So very quickly, since I get a lot of weird answers when I ask this, what's UX? Don't tell me, I'll tell you. User experience is the more scientific, psychological, and problem-solving side of product experience and service design. Our goals include happier, more loyal customers, ease of learning and use, shorter, more intuitive processes, and accessibility for people with mobility, vision, hearing, or other issues. And quick accessibility note, there was a football game in America a couple of years ago, and they decided it would be cool to change the uniforms for just one game and put one team in all green and one team in all red. Um, and of course, if anybody happens to be colorblind, you don't have to raise your hands, but that means to you the game looked like this. Um, and Nike got in a huge, uh, huge controversy, at least for a day or two, because they didn't seem to understand color blindness. So for people who think that UX just draws boxes on the page, I'm trying to stress the amount of process and work we actually have because we need to design something that's going to work for everybody, no matter if they're differently abled or not. So, just like development has processes like Agile, UX has one key process that we use or should be using, and it's called User-Centered Design, or UCD for short. And with this microscopic session, I'm just going to hit a couple of the key points here, so, because this is a long process that takes time, or sometimes we just have to do a few of these tasks and we can be done quickly. Research is an important part of what UX does. It's not user-centered without users. Statistics and quantitative data are great, but there's just no substitute for talking to users and really getting to know them and learning their motivations and needs and behaviors so that we can build what they need. We want to know the why and not just the what. Then we've also got information architecture, which has to do with hierarchies, structures, and taxonomies. This could be the navigation of an app or system, could be a uh, database structure. Uh, that's information architecture. Now we've got interaction design, which is what most people think of when they think of UX. These are your wireframes, your prototypes, the blueprints of what the designs are. These would show process flows, layouts, menus, interactions, paths, choices, and so much more. And... Now it goes to user testing, which happens during the UX process, before engineering writes a line of code. I'm looking for surprised faces there. Yes, we actually test before engineers write a line of code because we want to make sure that the execution and the idea are excellent for the target customers. We don't want engineering to build it until we're sure of what will be built. User testing will bring to light any flaws, which means we get to iterate on ideas, which sends us back to our interaction design work. Hey, I don't know if anyone heard about this famous unnamed tech company who I'm not naming, who recently announced that they had to redesign last year's redesign. It turns out that when they released this to the public, people felt that the new system was cluttered, things were obstacles and drawbacks. The company had to actually post to their own blog that, yes, this new version was overcomplicated, lacking simplicity, cluttered, difficult to navigate, and went a little too far with some visual design choices. How much did this company spend on all of these concepts and layouts and engineers and testing it for multiple platforms? A million dollars? More? Think about the time and money this company could have saved if they had pivoted or changed direction before the developers wrote a line of code. UX research helps us know that target customer so well that we can tell you early on if an idea is likely to be the wrong one. We can know up front. There's no longer a reason to just build it, just ship it, and find out later it's a disaster. Companies can save heaps of money, time, staff resources, and customer agony by integrating the full UX process. Your UX department would have known at multiple points that the new designs were overcomplicated, lacking simplicity, cluttered, difficult to navigate, and just uncool. 
UX specialists should be working hand in hand with product teams so that we can block or improve ideas that are unlikely to match the customer. So where do we fit in? If your company or project doesn't use UX, chances are this will sound familiar. The client, the product manager, the CEO of a small company, someone with the vision says, here's what we're going to build. Then, of course, the engineers build it, test it, get it on a server, and then wouldn't you know, someone looks at it and goes, you know, now that I see it, I don't like it. Let's change it. I think I want to do something different. Now you've got to go back to the beginning. Now what do you want? And make sure you say it with an angry New York accent. Now what do you want? And now you have to build it again, test it again, get it on a server, and possibly cycle through that frustration again. Eventually you release something and you hope people like it. When you can add UX to the process, UX runs interference on everything. That person with the vision or the product idea comes to UX. UX then cycles through its process and uh, does its own iterations. Then it goes to UX testing. Let's make sure this is really great for the users. If we find flaws, let's fix them now, not after we release it. Once everybody is happy, we package it up and we give it to engineering so that you can build it once. And that way, if someone changes their mind, they've got to come talk to me. And believe me, you don't want to talk to me. Uh, no, I, you do want to talk to me, but I'm going to usually talk that person out of it unless they've got a really good reason to change that late in the game. Though, while it's still in the UX process, that's a great time to change your mind and possibly experiment with other things uh, because it costs so much more to change your mind after it, it moves to development. The goal is for you to build a fantastic product once. Building it once. And do you smell that? That is the sweet, happy pizza smell of you only having to build something once. Because even if someone changed their mind, I'm handling that. And I'm from America, and I will handle those people. But no, really, your UX people will handle those people. They're all some shade of me. So let's talk quickly about UX and lean. Um, UX often disagrees with product managers and engineering on how lean do we go? What, what's the least thing we can build and release? Well, which is the minimum viable jogging outfit? I normally have people vote on their phones, but I don't have time for that. Um, now, non-UX roles typically tell me the leanest thing is the first jogging outfit because it's pretty viable, and if you take away the hat, it's pretty minimal. But UX would say the middle one because we want to make sure we're giving something to customers that's got enough for them to feel real satisfaction. You never get a second chance to make a first impression, so says the American commercial from my childhood. This is especially true when your customer first installs your app or visits your website. Is this too lean for them to enjoy, get hooked on, and really want to use? Or because you're going to run the risk that your customers think you're bad at this or you build broken things. If people get turned off by the MVP or beta, whatever you want to call it, are they going to reinstall it and give you another chance when you put out another release? Ask yourself how many times you've given companies second and third chances, especially when you have felt done. That's why for UX, the V in minimum viable product is really minimum valuable product. What's the leanest thing that we can build that the, build that the customer will still feel has great value? Customers don't care if you're calling it an MVP. They will be very happy to hate it and tell everyone they know they didn't like it because people love negative attention. And take it from Eric, Mr. Lean. He says, what if we found ourselves building something nobody wanted? In that case, what did it matter if we did it on time and on budget? Go to lean and minimal and you might be building something nobody wants. So, Product and engineering should be working with UX to prioritize stories and features to find that balance. Now the super elephant in the room, UX and Agile. Once upon a time, I went for safe Agile training. I know, feel free to cry along with me. And I learned that they had no idea how UX fit into Agile. They told me if I figure it out, I should tell them. 
P.S. I recently emailed them. They didn't want to hear from me. Um, but th- now, in uh, their, more, their newer version, they've given me a little tiny cycle icon in the bottom left. Now, that doesn't tell me or anybody how UX or product designers work into the, the day-to-day. Are we on the team? Are we in sprints? Are we outside of this universe? When I show this to some people, some will say to me, well, safe is a joke. And I say, well, maybe or maybe not. I'm not gonna pass judgment. I'm just a UX chick. But it's been hard for me to find any agile training that goes into depth on how you're going to work with the people who are doing the product design, the people who are feeding what you guys are building. And just in case we have any agile coaches or trainers in the room today, feel free to look really guilty and then come talk to me later. Um, So here's where UX really lives. And again, I'm just using SAFE as a model because it's got a great thing I can put on a screen and point to. We're in portfolio land. We are involved in what we're building, why we're building it, and prioritizing what we're building. We are in continuous exploration, the process of continually exploring the market and user needs so that we can define that vision, roadmap, and the features that will satisfy those needs. We're all about customer solutions. UX, it's totally what UX lives for, customer solutions. UX would love to make DevOps better. We care about enhancing the culture. We would love to decrease failure rates, though we think of those more on the human experience level rather than on the technical level. We want shorter time between fixes, but you know what we really want? Fewer fixes. I bet you want that too. Can everyone hold hands and join me on that, fewer fixes. Better UX design earlier, fewer fixes later. And we're on the team. One UX designer should be on the Agile team. That person represents the whole creative team and can circle back with the visual designers, UX researchers, copywriters, everybody who's involved from from that end. Invite your UX person to stand-ups, retro release planning, and any meeting or showcase where UX is going to be discussed. If something comes up and your UX person isn't in that meeting, that's no excuse to make a decision without your expert teammate. Please table that, track that person down, I'm sure it can wait the 10 minutes, and get your question answered by by the teammate with that proper field of expertise. Assign JIRA, version one, or whatever type of tickets you're using to UX with where there's any problems, questions, or ambiguities. And get us in the same system that you're using. Don't stick us in a Trello board if everybody's using JIRA or version one. We're all over this thing. People who tell me that they just don't know where UX fits into Agile, I usually find out they just really don't understand what UX does and why they do it. But you're starting to get that now, and that's why you're the genius hero at your company. So a few more things about Agile, and these are photoable um, once they fill up. So UX should be part of sprints, but we've got to start weeks or months ahead of you. We need that runway, especially for all the research and iterating and testing we want to do. We need to be included in iteration planning, but be understanding that depending upon the tasks or features or stories, our timing varies greatly, but we should be able to estimate that. We might just need to wireframe or prototype something quickly, or we might need a lot of time, especially with something new where that might require research, time before we give it to you. Get stories, bugs, and issues to UX as soon as possible. And of course, include us in sprints, remembering that we need to be two or more sprints ahead of you, uh, weeks, weeks ahead of you. There's, it doesn't make sense to invite me to a meeting and say, I need the wireframes tomorrow or next week. Now that you understand we have a long process that includes testing, we need time. I suggest getting plenty of tech stories and fixing of tech debt into the backlog so that if for some reason UX is creative and cyclical cycle, I like that cyclical cycle, um, if we run late, you guys can truly be agile and instead of waiting for us, which doesn't feel particularly agile, you can switch to some low hanging fruit that product or engineering may have prioritized. Because the key to what we're doing is that testing. We, that way we can uh, be sure we're creating a great execution of the right idea for customers. 
And uh, research and testing can be a bottleneck, and the way to solve that bottleneck is to hire the right number and the right types of UX workers. I suggest one UX architect for up to three projects, depending on their size, and one UX specialist researcher supporting up to three UX architects. If your UX people, either internal or external, are what we call T-shaped, which means they've got multiple subspecialties like research and testing, then maybe you don't have specialist researchers, but give your UX UX architects more time since they're doing more tasks. I read a scrum book that warned that UX specialists might be a bottleneck, so they should just train other people to do their job. Well, great UX designers have natural talent for UX work. Not everybody who tries to learn UX ends up good at it, just like not everybody who wants to be a programmer ends up good at it. And, okay, I'm your UX teammate. I did some basic programming in the 1970s. So you want to definitely teach me some Python because you're a little backed up, right? This is a good idea, yes? Where's all the yes? This is a great idea. Wait, maybe I can go take a three-day boot camp and then I can code on our project. Okay, you're not buying this. All of a sudden, this doesn't sound like a great solution, right? Wait, where are you going and why are you running away from me? Okay, well, if you wouldn't suggest or demand it for your own jobs, please don't suggest or demand it for UX. We shouldn't be training other people to do our job. Let's talk about our good old buddies, the Agile Manifesto principles. There's a few of them that are very relevant to working with UX, like we care about customer satisfaction. The highest priority is to satisfy the customer, and that's directly linked to how valuable, delightful, easy to learn, easy to use, and life improving our product is. We've got principle five, give motivated individuals the environment and support they need, trust them to get the, right, the job done. That means we have to hire great UX workers, trust them, and give them what they need. Principle nine, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. I would say let's not just make our design good, let's make it great. And this one I want to harp on a moment. Principle 10, work not done. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. When UX shows up to your meetings and wants to kill or change features or the project, we're usually seen as the bad guys. Then they stop inviting us to meetings. But instead, I would like engineering to support us, or to support our efforts to create less work for you and to create simpler interfaces and features, um, or eliminating projects the company shouldn't do at all. My example there is, once upon a time, won't say where, I was working on a cross-functional team and they wanted me to rip off what a competitor had because according to the product manager, 21% of our mobile web users aren't filtering their search results. Okay, I said, show me the data. Do you have data that shows that this is a problem? Are the customers unhappy? Are they, are they buying less from us, less often? Are they spending less? Magically, they never got back to me and the project went forward. I told the team we shouldn't be building this. It has no customer value. And when they spin up a team next year to simplify the pages this is on, I think it's going to get removed because it feels like clutter. And uh, wouldn't you know, it was built, it went live on the site, and it was there for a few months, and then the simplification project came in and took it off the site. And that was six months of a large cross-functional team's time and budget that could have been saved. So remember simplicity and the work not done. How am I doing? So let's measure how it's working, because we love that stuff. Yes, hands up, we love stuff. Okay, so without customer satisfaction, we might not have customers, and you probably love quantitative data. I'm in a little bit more of a qualitative data world, but we can measure customer satisfaction with things like, are we getting fewer complaints, better app reviews, higher app ratings, fewer support tickets, fewer call center calls, and more positive semantics of social posts? What about more app installs or fewer uninstalls? And how about average order value? Are people spending more with us? And is there a higher conversion rate? These are also measurable. How long do stories and projects and epics take to do? You'll know this before and after your UX revolution. Also check with developers. I'm wondering if they're going to be able to estimate their time better when they're working from finalized vetted UX designs rather than user stories or whatever they're estimating from now. 
And if UX is providing blueprints and those are being followed, we should be seeing fewer fixes, which I think everybody would be happy about. And we can also measure some of the internal cultural things. A lot of that can be anecdotal and ends up qualitative, but you can also build a survey that asks people about their collaboration, communication, their job experience, and give it to them every few months and see if it's working. When you're making organizational and process changes, you might see things get worse before they get better. So what could be going wrong in super short version? Are we building the right thing? Is product collaborating with UX on what features, stories, or products even build? Are we allowing UX to kill or alter ideas during planning and treatments? Is UX being overruled or circumvented or excluded, which I saw a lot in San Francisco? Empower and include UX. Don't let others do their specialized job. Make sure you allot time and budget for the UCD process, especially user testing. We want to know before developers build it if this is a bad idea. What about the quality, experience, and expertise of your UX practitioners? Who's doing the UX work? Juniors, artists, non-specialists, non-UX roles? At where else in your company do you let non-specialists do specialist work? And a bonus heads up, because I think I have time. Really quickly, once upon a time, people separated, hey, the website is slow, but it's good. I still like these people. But I was just reading some uh, expected trends for 2019, though I think this is already happening, and that is people are starting to feel like, um, no, this actually, this website is bad because it's slow. I'm reading that website performance, server performance, things like this are now going to be perceived as part of user experience. So anybody delaying Server issues, refactoring, all of this stuff, it's going to be important to let that float back up in priority because people are going to start to perceive this no longer as, well, it's slow, but it's great. It's going to be more of, this sucks. So don't suck. Um, so very quickly, that is, this is my last slide. Hopefully I made it and I'm not being pulled off the stage. Um, so this is the kind of thing, take a picture of, visit these web addresses later. Um, if you like the 25 minute version, you might like the two day long version. So I've got a, a much longer version with a lot more information, funny stories and good jokes, um, which I didn't have time to tell here, but um, I'm also gonna be holding a drawing for the full video course. This is a six hour video course. So if anybody wants to enter the drawing, I'll be drawing that in a week. Other than that, please find me on LinkedIn, send me an email. I'll be around all day and I uh, hope to talk to everybody about improving your user experience. Thanks.